Well hello internet and welcome to part 6 of my how to make Android apps tutorial. Today I'm going to cover a lot of issues that are out there. I'm going to show you how to update Android Studio to 0 0.8. I'm going to solve a whole bunch of Android Studio problems that come about whenever you do so. And I'm also going to answer a question in regards to the previous tutorial in how are we going to pass objects between screens. Very simple, should have covered it before. I'll cover it this time. If you didn't watch part 5, you should definitely watch it unless you're just here for the new Android Studio stuff. And otherwise, I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so to get the new Android Studio, we're just going to go to developer.android.com SDK installing studio.html. And then you're going to come down here and click on this guy right here and install everything and everything's wonderful. Now after you install everything, we're going to have to go in here and fix a couple things. What we're going to do first is we're going to go into configure and then we're going to go into project defaults. Make sure you can see everything here and project structure. Whenever you do, you're going to want to make sure that this is the right SDK folder that you want to use and this is the Java version that you want to use as well. Now of course this right here is probably going to be different on your computer and this is going to be different. So just look for the SDK folder and the version of Java you want to use. Then after you have that just come down here and click on OK. Now we're going to bounce back again and we're going to solve another common issue. Come down to configure again and then you're going to go to preferences and all this information is going to show up. We're going to go to compiler, Java compiler and you're going to want to make sure that 1.6 is selected right there and then come down here and click on OK. Alright now you have all that set up I'm going to go in and open up an application everything's going to start installing here. One of the errors that is extremely common that you're probably going to see is that the project is using an unsupported version of Gradle. Well, to solve that, come down here. Let's move this up a little bit. You're going to see that error pop up at the top of the screen and then down here you're going to say click update plugin for Gradle. So just click on that and that solves that issue. Alright, that's one of the first things almost everybody sees. Now we're going to go into the SDK Manager, this guy right here, and I'm going to show you everything that I have installed in the SDK Manager. Okay, here it is. So I have Android SDK Tools 23, and I have 20 for the platform tools, all of these different guys, as well as 19.0.1. This is the one I'm going to use a lot because the emulator works perfect for that. And I'm going to show you how to set up the emulator as well. And there is everything else I have set up. And there you go, there you go. So that's every single thing I have installed. Most important thing is that you have 19 right here and you have all these things installed as well as what I had at the top. There's 18 and I also have the support repository and the support library installed down here. So that's everything. And then of course to install everything you just click on what you want to install. Just put a little check mark here and click on install one package and then select up here. Click on accept license and install. Alright so now we have the SDK manager set up. Now it's time to set up the Android virtual device manager which is this guy right here. And here we are. And I've gotten this guy to work on my device but the emulator is really kind of wonky so I'm just going to come in on this guy right here and I'm going to click on edit. And then for this guy I just called it Nexus. Doesn't matter what you call it. I'm going to select Nexus 7 right there. I have level 19 for Android and Intel Atom as long as you have an Intel processor you can use that. Skin with dynamic hardware controls, nothing for the cameras. You can see exactly how much RAM, how much heap, how much internal storage and I use host GPU down here and that is what I use. So I'm going to click on OK. Another error that you're probably going to see. The error is UIDs are inconsistent. Okay to solve that issue uh, it's pretty simple. Just click on this guy or whatever emulators you want to use or all your emulators and you're going to click on start. Whenever you do that you're going to see an option here wipe user data. You're going to click on that and click on launch. That is going to get rid of that UID error. And that is everything. Those are all the errors that I have seen with Android Studio and exactly how to solve them. Uh, another, well actually there's one more. Over here, one thing that's confusing for people is you can see build.gradle right here and build.gradle right there. This is the one that you're going to want to work with. So we decided we're going to use Android 19 and you're going to open this guy up. You're going to put 19 there, 19.1.0. Make sure that is set properly. I'm going to use the minimum SDK 14. There's 19 again. And then if you come down here and you scroll up, 
a little bit. You're going to see down here with this guy, make sure you have version 7 colon 19 plus, or, well, don't forget that little decimal point plus, okay? And if you do that, and, and let's just show you what's going to happen. If I change this in any way, you're going to see up here, Gradle files have changed since last project sync, da 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 da. Come over here and click on sync now, and that's going to fix any of those errors that you might get. I'm going to switch this back to 19 and click on sync now, because that's what I want. And like I said, the reason I'm using 19 is because the emulators are unstable on some operating systems so that's the issue and we want to just keep on making Android and whenever they do get Android L set up properly and working then we will use it so we're gonna get rid of that and then what I'm gonna do is show you how to pass objects between screens again this is from part 5 I didn't cover this so I'm gonna cover it now first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom object new Java class Come over here and I'm gonna call this human and click on OK and there is human now if you want to pass objects between screens what you're going to need to do is come up here and type in implements serializable. There it is. And what serializable basically means is by putting it there, you're stating that this class can be sent to other services. And this will allow you to save instances of a class and restore them whenever you need it. So we need that. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to create our constructor. No point in getting in anything. Well, let's go in here and define private double and let's give our human a height and a weight. And then let's also give our human a string name equal to and nothing and that. And then I'm going to right click inside of here and come down here to generate. Click on that. And when you do, you're going to see constructor pop up here. Just come in here and select all those and come down here and click on OK. And then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go generate again. And I'm going to say that I want my getters and setters generated for me as well. Just come in here, highlight all those. Come down here, click on OK. And there you go. That's all we have to do for this customized object. And you can pass any type of serializable object back and forth between screens as well. So now we're going to jump over into mainactivity.java and set up the passing of this object. And all of the changes are going to occur in this method down here on get name click. And I don't need anything over here, so let's just move that out of the way so we can zoom in a little bit so you can see everything good. Now, right after we have this result right here, we're going to get rid of this guy. And we could also get rid of this guy as well because we're not going to need that. There it goes. And then we're going to come in, scroll this up a little bit, and we're going to define our customized Bob human is equal to new human. There it is. And let's say that he is six and a quarter feet tall, 185 pounds, and his name is Bob. Now, if we want to send this, we have an intention to send Bob. I'm just going to call it send Bob equal to new intent. And then we have to pass our context to it. And then we have to say where we want it to be passed, which is second screen and class. And there that is. Now, if we want to put Bob inside of our intent, we're going to go put extra, and then we are going to give it the key of human Bob, and then we are going to say that we want to pass our Bob object. Pretty simple. Then down here for start activity, we're going to use the same thing, start activity for result. Just come in here, issue our intent and the result, and that's it. You just passed an object over, and I'm going to run the emulator and show you what happens. We're going to have to go into second screen.java now and make a couple little changes here inside of on create this guy up here. We can get rid of this guy right here, just comment that out. And what we're going to have to do is create a bob over here equal to human. And then we're going to go activity that called and then get serializable extra and just say the key that we want human bob. Now we have our text view right here, and we're going to pop in all Bob's information into that text view. So calling activity message append, and in this situation, I'm going to say that I want Bob and get his name. Put that inside of there, and let's put a space there, plus, and then let's also go and get Bob's height, and we could say feet, plus get his weight, and we could say pounds. And if we make those changes, let's go in here and let's run this guy. Pops up, we want to click on the emulator, pick the Nexus that we just set up in our AVD and click on OK. And our emulator opens up and we can just click on go get it. And you can see right there the Bob data was passed over and we can still to him in here and type my name, click on enter. And then it pops over and gives my name right there. 
So that's how to pass objects, how to fix Android. Another thing you guys might not know about is I'm giving away another Samsung Galaxy Note 3 as well as a Galaxy Gear smartwatch and all you need to do is before the end of the month go to the link under the video in the description and submit an Android app made by anything. You can use Android Studio, use Eclipse, you can use App Inventor, you can use anything. One of the only restraints is it has to work on every Android device or you know within a minimum that makes sense. But I have all the rules in the description, so click on those and go and make yourself an Android app and win a couple Android devices. And for the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a conversion app. A lot of you guys wanted to see me make an app. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an app from scratch. I'm not even going to create the use case. I'm going to do that live right here for you in the next video. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, till next time.